Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. We continue our coverage of the sport of wrestling and mixed martial arts. Today, the Nike Hot Seat has a very special guest making his return after a long-awaited absence, the Spaniard. You know him, perhaps, as Charlie Brenneman. Charlie, how are you? I'm doing very well, and you're right. It has been a long time. It's crazy how it's flying. Well, you know what? I find it interesting that uh, you've made a move now to Middletown, PA, from Jersey. You've got a new book available on Amazon. It's called driven my unlikely journey from classroom to cage and this is what fascinates me how absolutely intelligent you are and people don't give fighters uh too much of a um you know they don't give fighters too much credit when it comes to uh, uh possessing you know exceptional talent skill and intelligence you are one of those guys that is absolutely screwing everything up for everybody by <laughs> ruining the bell curve so uh, welcome back to the show, man, and thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. You know, that's the first time that I've that I've been on the other end of hearing someone read the title of my book, and it's pretty surreal to me that, that I actually sat down and did it, and it's a product in my hand and in people's hands. Talk to us about the, the idea of writing a book, specifically at this, you know, this point in your career. You're not retired. Uh, you know, you're, you're ranked in the world uh, still. You're, you're on the speaker, mentor, uh, tour. You know, you're you're a past NCAA Division One coach. I could go on and on, and I, obviously I will. But the the obvi- the obvious uh, idea is that you're too young to write an autobiography, but I don't think so. Well, it kind of what triggered this whole thing uh, about a year and a half ago when I fought down in Baltimore at UFC 172. I got knocked out cold on live TV, and uh, you know I was unconscious. As soon as I opened my eyes, it was like the whole world kind of. I looked at the whole world differently. And for the first time in my life, my, my mortality as a fighter was shaken, and I was scared at what was next. You know, it, it was a really develop, developmental developmental period in my life, and I, I got, literally I got home from Baltimore a couple days later. I had to lay on the couch for about three days with a splitting headache from my concussion. I couldn't watch my daughter. My my in laws had to come pick her up. Saw me, you know, kind of writhing on the couch, and it made me look at the world differently. And as soon as that headache cleared up, man, I started writing. And I thought I've always wanted to write a book. I'm at a a point right now, the lowest point that I've been. Time to reflect. I started writing, and a year and a half later, um, you know, this is my book. I I plan to write more in the future. And you're right. Um, my life's not over. My career might not be over. It might be over. But I just felt like I was in a good spot to write down how I got from being a Spanish teacher to a, a UFC fighter. And before that, even before being a Spanish teacher, of course, being a wrestler, and that perhaps give us, gives us all a common ground. Um, you know, when, when you think about writing a book, at least when I think about writing a book, 12, 14 pages with pictures, generally made up of small words for the kids, and, uh, yeah. and then it's also very large in size so the children can handle it. Uh, you chose to go a different route. You chose to write a a career book about um, leveraging skills that, that uh, wrestlers and MMA stars have, and should I just say fighters, but uh, levering the skill, skills they have to transition positively from the fight game where you are so totally immersed in the chase yeah. and the preparation and in the competition to long-range planning, long-range goals. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so that was a it's a huge thing. You know, it's not a step by step. I will write a step by step in a couple years from now, but what this is, it's my journey. And in that journey, I outline principles like surrounding yourself with the best, controlling the controllables, um, avoiding negativity. All of these things are things that I live by, but it's encompassed in my story. And, you know, when I wrote it, from where I'm from, from Holidaysburg, it's a lifetime of wrestling. And people in my community had followed me for as long, you know, as long as I had started the sport of wrestling. And then when I decided to leave my teaching job to pursue fighting, it was like, what is this kid doing? He's throwing his life away. So for the last decade, I've gotten questions, anything from the obvious, how much money do you make to what's it like to what's this guy like to what's the best moment of your career. And the book was written to answer those questions. And and you're right, wrestling, uh, what I always say is wrestling is who I am and fighting is what I do. Everything I do, I attribute to the sport of wrestling. All the principles, all the, the perseverance, the dedication, the sacrifice, the, the, the hard work, all of those things enabled me to make the life that I've made. And I'm, I'm transitioning that to share with other people, to share with young kids, young wrestlers, 
in the corporate world. You know, it's a recipe for success that we wrestlers have. And the art is just putting it on a piece of paper, putting it into a presentation and sharing it with the world. You and I have always gotten along in that we have a, a tremendous love for the sport of wrestling. My, if somebody asked me to describe you, uh, perhaps, you know, in depth even, I would say, and, and take this the right way, please, because yeah. I, understand, <laughs> I understand how hard you punch. So I would say a combination of split personality and even deeper that um, that it's a complex mix, I think. Your personality, uh, small town, real likable, uh, highly intelligent. Uh, but then there's that big city aspect about you. You fit real well wherever you go. Um, do you think that's an accurate description of you? I would. And, uh, you know, if you, if you read the, the summary of my book, it'll say I'm a complex mix of small town and bright lights. And that's exactly what I am. You know, I've, I grew up in a small town in Hollidaysburg and I've lived simply. I live simply. You know, I don't have an extravagant house. I don't have extravagant things. But at the same time, I love a bit of extravagance here and there. I love being in New York City. I love being in front of the camera. But at the end of the day, when all that stuff is done, I just want to go home, be with my wife, my daughter, my dog, eat some pizza and watch some TV. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a very complex mix of, of extravagant and very simple. Do you find yourself explaining yourself to your friends and family as to the type of individual? I'm explaining all the time, but my people don't get it. Yeah, I find myself trying to explain there myself, it but it's it's complex <laughs> to the point of, you know, what do you do for a living? I just say, uh, uh, and then it's, I don't know what I do. I just be me. That's the best way to put it. I be me. Take us back to the origins of your career. Uh, starting in wrestling and, and take how old were you when you started wrestling? I was eight years old. Eight years old. And was it immediate love for the sport? Absolutely. It, uh, you know, I grew up in a wrestling family. My uncle wrestled for Penn State. He was a state champion from Pennsylvania. My dad wrestled. My siblings wrestled. So, you know, I, I can't say, uh, man. you still there? Yeah. All right. Give me a second. The, uh, the camera just, Turned yeah. off, and that's okay. okay. We can turn that back on. And there he is back joining us now. The All right. hot seat, Charlie Brenneman. Sorry about that. Computer went to sleep. <laughs> um, so yeah, from a very young age, I was I was in love with the sport. I went to tournaments for as long as I can remember. It was something I did. It was a. It gave me a good feeling about myself. It gave me something I'm huge on that I I talk to kids about. I talk to adults about. It's just a sense of purpose. Wrestling gave me a sense of purpose. It was who I was. So wrestling gave you that sense of purpose, and it's a um, you know, um, when, when you have somebody like your father or your uncle and others that you admire and love, uh, as an example, they become mentors to you. And now you become mentors to <laughs> others and are mentoring other people through, you know, positive lifestyle, uh, you know, sense of family. I mean, you have an incredible sense of strong family values that uh, are, are, I think, uh, you wear them on your sleeve well. Some people wear them as a, uh, a badge. You wear them on your sleeve showing how much your family means to you. And uh, surely that is sometimes hard for guys to, you know, really embrace and to express. Absolutely. You know, it's, I actually wear it on my leg. I have my family coat of arms tattooed on my leg, uh, literally. So, but yeah, I mean, my first two values are integrity, which is, is my, my code of living and family. Uh, you know, without those two things... I wouldn't be who I am. And, and from a very young age, I was fortunate. I had my mom and my dad and my family. They supported me everything I did. Um, but yeah, kind of what you mentioned, the, the, the role I'm taking now, you know, whether I'm done fighting completely or not, is to share my knowledge and experience. And I put it together into a program, a curriculum. I call it Addicted to Excellence. And it shares my, my lifestyle, my operation, my operation system and uh, – yeah, I carry it on my sleeve, man. When I speak, when I mentor, I get emotional. I cry it. <laughs> cool. I don't want to say it, I'm, you know, as I'm a fighter, but I cry it. It simple things, man. Good people doing good things. That that makes me tick. I I feel good about it, and I just want to pass that on to the younger generation. I can't go to weddings. It's really it's really quite bad, you know. <laughs> a softies. That's okay. Um, take us to Pros versus Joes, the reality show. Uh, go back to 2006. You became the champion in that show. How did that come about? Well, it was the, the sport of wrestling is how it came about. Um, I was coaching wrestling at Hollidaysburg, and I was assisting a guy by the name of Mike Moore, who's a good good friend and a coach. He uh, he said, "Hey, 
actually at that time it was, hey, I can get us out of a few days of school if we go to a coach's <laughs> clinic in Ohio. He said, but you got to register. So I registered. It was, I believe it was NWCA. It was something at, I think maybe St. Ed's or somewhere over, over in Ohio. So I went there, went, you know, did the, did the convention, got back home. And because I had signed up for it and gave my address, I got a piece of junk mail sent to my parents' house where I was living at the time. And I just, I talk about this in the book, but you know, fast forward, I applied, they responded. And before you knew it, I was out in um, Los Angeles and, and I was filming a reality TV show. I went against professional athletes. I had trained for it. I took that wrestling mentality that I said is who I am. And I trained for it and I kicked butt, I brought my brother along and uh, I did pretty darn well. I think uh, <laughs> I like, I like how it, it's, it seems like right place, right time, always for Charlie Brenham. Has it always been like that? You know what? That, that's a good point, a good question, and a good uh, room for, for clarification. You know, it, it may appear that way, that, oh, he's just lucky. But no, what, what I do in, in my days, what I do in my time with my energy is I, I've, I, I'm focused. I'm determined to leave a legacy. That's my – I want to leave a legacy. I want to influence people, and I want to leave a legacy on this planet. And what I do with my time – when a lot of other people are sleeping, uh, hanging out, watching movies, I plant seeds. I develop relationships. I come up with ideas. I bounce those ideas off of friends and mentors. And if you plant a thousand seeds, you know, you're going to have a hundred trees grow. And I've just been very fortunate that, you know, my parents instilled in me a good, a good mind. Uh, I've, I've been blessed with a, a, you know, a pretty effective body for what I do. And I'm just, I plant seeds. I cultivate relationships and, you know, one out of ten works. That's kind of how it is. UFC fighter, former UFC champ Frankie Frankie Edgar, one of your buddies, uh, surely one of ours, will agree with you in that you are a driven athlete. You you have you set goals and you and uh, you also set objectives to get to those goals. Uh, you plan things out. You plan for success, not plan for failure. And perhaps. Um, that is best exemplified in, in your new book, Driven, My Unlikely Journey from Classroom to Cage. It's available on Amazon. Can you talk to us about the process of writing a book? Yeah, um, it's an arduous process for sure. And the so what I did, the, people ask me about this all the time. And, and I mean, I'm even thinking so big as, you know what, I'm going to develop a program for fighters, how to write a book, how to create a speaking career. But when I got knocked out after my head got cleared, I sat down. I I literally just started writing. I I was I was emotional. I was crying. I was I was at you know the 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 bottom of the barrel, and I just it, it was. I just started writing. I started thinking, and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote, and I had about a hundred pages. I wrote on a you know Microsoft Word. I had about a hundred pages, probably about twenty or twenty five thousand words. And right there, that was that was a manuscript, but it was about. 20 different stories that didn't necessarily link together in a comprehensive book. So I took that, I bounced it off my family. You know, this is where my sister is an English professional, but everyone else is my family. We're amateurs in the professional writing world. And, you know, they gave it back to me and said, you think you kind of should fix this? This doesn't make sense. This is out of place. So I just went and I, I copy, I paste it, I rewrote, I restructured. And, you know, after you know, after a year, a little over a year, I, I had a, a rough draft done, but then came the process of self-publishing. And I have a, an extremely valuable mentor and friend of mine, Keith Eldred, who had published books through Amazon. And we sat down, we took about 40 hours, 40 hours. We met on four consecutive weekends and we got this thing formatted. We got the, I mean, there's, it's a whole other world writing books, worrying about copyright, worrying about font, worrying about, you know, pictures, everything. So, it was arduous, but that's the the basic process of how it was done. Yeah, there's there's a whole lot of things you should do in a book and things you shouldn't do in a book, mm -hmm. uh, especially if it's going to be published. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, once it's uh, put into print, can't take any of it back. Yep. And you know that, right? Absolutely. You know, it's I, I've learned some pretty valuable lessons on social media. I talk about this in in my book, but you know, I almost got. I almost came to blows with the toughest guy on the planet for something I said that on social media. And yeah, I tell the kids all the time, once you put something out there, it's out there. So yeah, I had to be, you know, I don't want lawsuits. <laughs> I just want to write my book and tell my story. I don't need to be defending any lawsuits. So, yeah, you know, say, I kept say, that. In. Say his name. Don't just call him the toughest, so-called toughest guy on the planet. Say his name. 
John Jones, John Bones Jones. John Bones Jones. So. Not many people in this world have come nose to nose with him, but I was one of them. Well, I tell you what, I did a couple times in Fort Dodge, Iowa. At Iowa Central, the home of the Tritons, where he spent his, uh, instead of going to Iowa State, he ended up having to go there and then ended up, I think, uh, going back to Ithaca, surrounding himself with, with uh, wrestling people in Ithaca, and then, of course, making his way into the mixed martial arts world. But um, a different cat, I'll tell you, a very different cat, and I think perhaps now we, we have a better understanding of why, but um, a tremendous athlete, a, you know, a, a truly very, very good fighter. Absolutely. Yeah, he, he's, I mean, he's obviously great at what he does, and I say it in my book, you know, I, I don't hate him. I, I never hated him. I just didn't really like a decision that he made. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, it, I answered to it, you You're know, right. like we all have to do. you got to be accountable. Yeah. Charlie Brenneman is accountable. You can find the accounts of his life, his experiences, the ups and downs in his new book called Driven, My Unlikely Journey from Classroom to Cage. He's been our guest in the Nike Hot Seat today. I want to leave with uh, a couple of things. First of all, the words of Mike Constantino, and I take this from your website verbatim. Yeah. I've known Charlie for approximately seven years. I've been at his side for so many ups and downs that life has thrown his way. And I'm most impressed on how Charlie has handled adversity and bliss. Charlie has such a strong family and moral value set and is highly intelligent, as I've described you myself. Uh, he's truly the total package, when, which makes it more impressive, I think. And I'm going to stop quoting Mike. Yeah. Um, it makes it that much more impressive what you've done to, to assist uh, young people in learning a, a second language, uh, how you live your life. Um, now that you're mentoring, your your book, I think, is a, a great step in expressing um, what you want to teach people. But I want you to take a moment. I've never done this in all my years. I've never said, hey, speak to the Spanish-speaking crowd, uh, our listeners, our viewers. Absolutely. Talk to them for a moment. Invite them to take a look at your book and what they might be able to uh, glean from it. Muy bien, que les quiero decir que agradezco mucho de todo el apoyo y, y, y lo que me han hecho. Y espero que compren el, el libro. Está, está en Amazon.com y puedes ver el libro en mi página de web, charlie-spenderman.com. Y como, como he dicho, agradezco a todo y compren el libro y os van a gustar. Saludos. Saludos, indeed. Charlie Brenneman has been our guest. He's the Spaniard been a friend of us uh, and ours for a good number of years, and we're happy to continue telling his story. You can look for him online at charlie-brenneman.com. That's two N's, Brenneman, two E's. Brenneman, I'll say it again, charlie-brenneman.com. Charlie, thanks for um, the inspiration, and thanks for continuing that that forward look. Uh, our sport, obviously, very proud of you, and you continue to to give back to it in so many ways. We appreciate your attendance and taking the Nike hot seat today. Well, my pleasure, man. I appreciate the time, and I appreciate the support, especially from the wrestling community. And, and just one kind of piece of, of advice or, or you know whatever you want to call it. I, never in my life did I think I'd write a book. Never in my life did I think I'd be a fighter or a reality TV champion or anything else I've ever done. I just set it and I go for it. So really and truly set your goals and go for it because it can happen. Charlie Brenneman from Middletown, PA, doing it upright with Takedown. Thanks so much, Charlie. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Scott. He is the Spaniard. Again, look for him online at charlie-brenneman.com.